On today's Visual Studio Toolbox is the triumphant return of Dimitri Leyland, who will show us really cool things in the XAML Designer. Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Today, I am your guest, Dimitri Leyland, and with me is our host, Robert Green. Hey, hey Dimitri. Robert. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to have you on the show. Thank you for coming on to host the show with me. So it's been a long time since you've been on the on the show. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, you joined the XAML designer team as a PM, right? Yes. So, so I'm the PM for XAML tools for desktop application cool. developers. So WPF, Framework Core, UWP, that's all in my boat. And I look after designer, high reload, and work with code editor and everything else that makes so while Impossible. you guys do in XAML, you know who to who to ping like with feature requests. <laughs> yes. So we know we, we're still dependent on the platform teams from mm -hmm. Windows that build the frameworks, UWP, WPF. We've got our .NET team that builds the runtime, and our team builds the tools. So there's three teams positioned to make all this come together. And then how does that work with Xamarin? Because Xamarin Forms also uses and There's another XAML. team <laughs> called Xamarin. So, so my team uh, actually collaborates with them at the engineering and PM level. So okay. at the engineering level, if you're using uh, Visual Studio for Mac, for example, and you're, you're building a Xamarin Forms application, that code editor experience comes from my team now. It used to be a different code base because they, you know, development was happening in parallel. Mm -hmm. We're optimizing it all together. Uh, we're working on uh, collaborating in designers, how to reload, code editors. So over time, you're basically going to see anything Xamarin that XAML be powered by the code coming out of my team, but implemented by the Xamarin team um, on top of our frameworks and our so does that framework. mean different implementations? One design, different implementations, or it's, one design, one implementation? It's it's one code base, one set of infrastructure, and slightly different implementations for the specific frameworks above okay. it. Okay, so things might still appear in one place first, and then yeah, there's still right, some of like that. Xamarin got hot reload first, yeah. right? Well, well, no, we, we no? had hot reload first, oh. and then Xamarin built it in parallel for their for their stack because they have a very different stack. They just talked about it first, and. Uh, and loudest. They, they talked about loudest. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, but we were collaborating. In fact, uh, one of the changes I'm going to talk about today about my hard reload is that it wasn't called hard reload at first. It was called something else. Mm. Then Xamarin was going to launch their feature, and because we work at the PM level together, we're actually one team now at the PM level. So my, my team and uh, the Xamarin Forms team, we're in the same manager chain. This was a change that was recently made, and we basically talk on a regular basis. On a weekly basis, cool. I talk to that team. All right. So awesome. we collaborated on making Hot Reload the same name across both features, because they're the same feature. And now, the engineering level, we're collaborating to make it the same code base. So Excellent. even cooler. All right. Even better. So the, the last time we have to rewrite the frameworks underneath everything, the better. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, our view. Absolutely. So Visual Studio 16.4. 16.4. Just, just released. Preview 3. Preview th yeah. 3. Yeah, because Preview 1 and 2 were out already, and Preview 3 just shipped at Ignite, oh. so just oh, like a week ago three from just when you're watching this episode. Okay. So the features, some of the features you're going to show today, all of the features are in 16.4? So we have features um, that we're going to show today, that I'm going to show today, from all the way back from the GA release ah, of 2019, okay. some okay. of them. Okay. Um, I'll call it out when it's referenceable, but like for the most part, you can think of it. If you have 16.4 Preview 3 installed, you have everything that I'm going to demonstrate except the two things that are uh, going to be at the very end, okay. which are slightly different. But everything right. else you have built in there. Um, and we have release notes for everything. So if you're curious why is something missing from your version, just check release notes. You'll see that you know maybe a feature came a little bit later if I forget to mention it. Okay, cool. Sure. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, I mean, it's a big list of features. I had to build myself a little ch a checklist, so I'll be looking down <laughs> occasionally. Uh, but I want to make sure we cover everything. So I want to start with talking about the tools um, in front of me. So here I have uh, Visual Studio uh, 16.4. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, this is the, s the same version as the public release that came out at Ignite. And uh, right now I'm going to talk to you first about the features that are here before you hit a five. So these are the features of Visual Studio that are that are like the, uh, the design time tooling experience. And this is a WPF application we're yes. looking at. So I have a WPF app. It's coming out of the samples repo at Microsoft Samples on GitHub called okay. WPF Samples. And that's why I'm using this expense app. Uh, Robert was making fun of me before the show. So He's we like, need another flipping <laughs> expense app. Another flipping <laughs> expense app. But it's OK. It's, it's a real sample. I didn't want to show something that, that folks could, couldn't uh, play around with as well. Uh, so here you go. It's a WPF core app. Just let's make sure that I'm not lying to you. There it is. .NET Core 3 oh, is the target, so okay, it's cool. a converted app. And one of the things that uh, wasn't working before 16.3, even though WPF Core was around bef even before 16.3 came out to so the previous release of VS, 
was our designer what wasn't wasn't the first available then it was available as a preview mm -hmm. so like the designer for a WPF app that chooses to target core. That was the thing that we had to work on. We had to basically rebuild the designer for, for this experience. It was a lot of work in my team. And uh, they had to make a choice. Did they start with the designer they had for .NET Framework or choose a slightly newer code base they had for the UWP designer? Okay. It's all XAML, but the code was different. And we chose the UWP one. So if you actually uh, have the same app and you open it in two, you know, in two instances of VS and you have both designers side by side, Slight differences between framework on the left and core on the right, but for the most part, you shouldn't notice anything super missing or broken. In fact, please let us know if something in the, the .NET Core WPF designer mm -hmm. feels like it's missing or not working. We need to know and be specific to report it via VS feedback because then we'll know which version you were using. Okay. Uh, we still support all the designers, so any bugs we, we find, we will try to fix all of that. So this is the core designer. It's on by default. It's working. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about in terms of new features that came out uh, back when Visual Studio 2019 was shipped was IntelliCode. So IntelliCode is something that we've, we've enabled. That was something my team had to enable. And IntelliCode is all about making it so that as you start typing, there's a bunch of start properties that come up first. And those are the ones where we scan GitHub and we look for XAML projects and we based on lear taking learnings from GitHub on this open source set of projects, we figure out uh, which properties you're, you're most likely to type. And people are very likely to type margin, column span, name width, et cetera. Okay. So these appear basically for, for any control you have, whether it's a list box, whether it's a label, you get star content. If you start typing something new, like let's say we were adding a button here, if I can type, uh, the first one is name, and that's very likely, right? You, like I, I know yeah. myself, I would probably name this button, and then I would want to set the content. So having this appear here just makes a ton of sense. So IntelliCode is really cool, and it's there for, for everything. Um, we also have a new feature. This is a 16.4 preview 3 feature that has been asked for many, many times, and we finally were able to implement it for you, which is this little new button right here. Uh, it's called Pop Out XAML. Uh, when you click this button, Right now, we have the designer above, and we have the code editor below. Mm -hmm. And when you click the button, we hide the code editor <laughs> inside of your designer view. Right there, the designer is now uh -huh. by itself, and we pop out the window. So you can now dock this window with the code on a different monitor. Mm. Not exactly a That's scenario nice. for my, my low resolution machine here pr projecting, uh, but certainly on my real, my real desktop setup, this is awesome now. That's I can a lot easier than looking at those three buttons on the lower right clicking the one to the right and then clicking XAML if you don't if you just want to see the XAML. In fact, the only way for, for this exact experience to make it a, a full uh, pop-up window, it used to be that you had to know a, a trick. You had to right-click on the, on the code file, on the XAML file and say open with and like it was a bunch of steps. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had this epiphany, why not automate it to a button? Cool. And we made it a button. And nice it actually job. took the, 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 the lead dev there like a few days to implement this. So it was a very quick feature too. And it came from customer feedback. Like we got a ticket, and we've seen these before, before I even joined the team that please make this possible. And uh, I just turned to the dev lead, he sits behind me. I'm like, can we do this? And he's like, yeah, there's this workaround we can probably automate, and we just did it. So cool. it was a beautiful moment uh, as a PM to get that sort of uh, to, to execution. Now, um, I just closed the window. You might ask me, how do I get back to having the code editor in my file here in my view? It was never actually missing. It was just minimized. So you can still expand yeah. it. In fact, if you open it up and you expand it here, you'll have two of them. And they're fully in sync. Any ah. changes you make in one, they're basically the same instance in behind the scenes. So they're completely kept in sync. So you can have them both open if that's what you want for some reason. So that's a new feature that you will only get if you have 16 for Preview 3 installed. Um, another thing that I want to point out that some folks uh, get confused about, and it's, it's on us a little bit, like I, I want to improve this in the future, but I'll call out the existing experience. Um, some people have actually told me, that they're like, uh, this is this live visual tree we'll talk about in a minute, right? Mm -hmm. And it only appears when your app runs. It shows you how your app is composed in a tree format, all the, all the objects nesting, all the XAML objects, elements. And um, they're like, well, I'd like something like that, but without running the app. And we do have it. It's called the document outline. It's, it's, some people just forget that it's there, but here it is, docked on the left side. It's showing you everything that, that is composing your screen here. And if you click and you say, you know what, I want to make the grid invisible just to see what that looks like, well, all your controls will go away. Like, all that works. 
And it's a design time feature. If you click this I, it puts a D is hidden, so it's design time only. If you oh, run this app, okay. it would appear again. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hide it, but it lets you kind of have a nice little playing with your visual tree to see which elements are here and what you can hide it. And I'm looking to make document outline a bit more useful in the future, but that's going to be next year at the earliest. Just wanted to point it out because I've had two people ask me mm -hmm. for, for this feature, and I'm like, we have the feature. <laughs> Yay, that, that was easy. Um, another feature that we added that's code editor specific, in other words, like tools before you run the application, which will be our next, next segment here, is a feature I've, I've actually wanted myself. Um, if you have a resource dictionary in your XAML application, that resource dictionary lives anywhere outside of your project, like in some component, mm -hmm. um, it, you have to know how to comp compose the path to, to merge it correctly back into your app. Um, I'm not explaining what this is because I'm assuming that the XAML devs know what I'm talking about, resource dictionaries and needing to merge yep. them to use them. Um, in fact, the path was different in WPF instead of versus like UWP. So you're like, oh, I have to remember different paths based on different apps. It's just something that, that really was annoying. Like I knew myself, I had to Google it every time. Uh, and we realized why not make, the, make it a feature and we had customer feedback come in. We don't do anything without hearing from customers too. So customers were like, please make, make this a feature. We had a, quite a few tickets come in for that as well. So we do listen to your tickets as they come in. Uh, so let me show you that feature right here. So I'm going to open up app.xaml and in here I already have a resource dictionary merged. I mean, look at this. You have to remember that it's the module name, then the word component, then a slash, followed mm -hmm. by the resource dictionary.xaml. Like, <coughs> it's a lot to remember. So you don't have to remember it anymore. If you have 16.4 Preview 3 installed, you just have to open the file that's your target. In this case, app.xaml is where I'm merging. You have to select a valid resource dictionary. You have to right click on it and say, merge resource dictionary into active window. Oh, nice. You click that. Um, we're actually going to change it right now after adding, adding the XAML to select everything. That's not what we wanted, so we're going to change that, you know, before 16 for goes GA. So it just added everything. Well, it didn't, it added, only, only added this, oh, these okay. lines here, but it selected ah, and zoomed okay. it selected everything and zoomed you to the end of the file. That's Got kind it. of a, a mini bug we're going to fix. Okay. But basically, it put, it, it put this, this code back in. And if it put the wrong thing back in here, you can just control Z away, right? Mm -hmm. Like. It's, it's not anything more than us typing the XAML for you, but it's really useful That's because nice. now you don't have to remember how to build this yep. path. So merge resource dictionary. That's really awesome. All right, so now that I have my, my app kind of co composed back to a run runnable state, uh, let's go ahead and run the application and, and let's talk about our uh, XAML de de live debugging tools that we have in Visual Studio. And I want to describe all of them before I talk about what's new in each, just to make sure folks know, know what this is all about. So now that I'm running the application, I have a couple of different things open. The first thing is there's a toolbar added to your application. This toolbar is there uh, on by default. You can turn it off if it bothers you for any reason. In fact, there's a button right here in the live visual tree. If you click on the button and you go back to your app, it disappears. So it's really configurable. That, that could be a setting that you can choose in, in settings as well. Does it have to be docked to the app window? Can you drag it off the it app It has window? to be docked. So for now, we, we can't really change that. It's, it's it's because of just how, that's how this works. That's my feature request. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get to, to at least a few things we, we made better here. So, okay. so this is what we call the in-app toolbar. So if you ever hear me say in-app toolbar, I mean this little Not toolbar. Not in-app, in-app. In-app, in-app, there you go. Uh, <laughs> my lawyer here will clear things up. Um, now, the other two tools we have is the live visual tree on the left that's this thing here. And I've also opened something called the Live Property Explorer. It's nice right. that you can turn it off in the Live Visual Tree, though. Yeah, yeah, you can turn it off, and I'm going to talk about some new features. So we've ha always had this ability, which is the minimize. So you can always have minimized. Okay. Uh, but we had a bunch of people ask, "Can you make it movable? It's blocking stuff sometimes." Like we want it there, we like it, but we but we want it movable. 16.4 Preview 3 is now mm. movable, left and right. Now but it has to be docked to the top? But it must be docked to the top, okay. yeah. It's because we literally inject some XAML into your, into your XAML app to put it there. We, we, if this really bothers you that it's docked, if, if there's like a strong case to make it something else, please send us feedback. That's always okay. what I'm going to tell people. For, for most people, this is good enough. Um, our team uses our own tools to build their own tools, so we use this feature all mm -hmm. the time. Our design team uses it, so, so there, we, hear, we hear a lot from our own people as well. And by making it movable, it solved um, this for a lot of people in terms of being problematic. The other thing we did was we made it so that it's themed. This toolbar used to be not themed. They used to have generic color. Now it follows your VS colors. Just make it easier on the eye to know that's a tool from Visuals coming from Visual Studio. Make it white, make it blue, it's going to follow along okay. just as well. 
And another change that we made to this was the selector uh, feature. Uh, so the element selector, select element, in fact, we fixed the tooltip. It used to be had a, had a worse name. I forget what it was. It was something not right. So now it's called select element. That's what it does. This is what allows you to go from your running app mm -hmm. to a selection in the live visual tree. So you saw when like, I'll do it again. When yep. I clicked on something, the live visual tree updated to say label. And the live property explorer updated to show you the live properties of that label as well. Now, the other thing that it did was, uh, well, that it will do once I click this button here, is that it will go to the label in in your XAML code as well. So it doesn't do that automatically? Um, there's, a, there's a button up here you, I could have done to track it, but I, okay. I disabled it. So you could have cho uh, shown a previous selected item, but I chose not to. It's, it all depends how you want to flow. I'm not going to, like this isn't a training, so I won't go for every possible mm -hmm. uh, combination of stuff, but definitely good good question. Um, I'm going to make this app top most. So let's do that. So that's the first thing I want to point out, hot reload. Um, lots of people still don't know we have hot reload. The app is running. I just use the selector to find something. So let's go for that flow again, call center. I'm going to select it. Then I click on the label. It went to the label. Now that we can see the app at all times, I'm going to say, hmm, uh, this label is, you know, has the wrong background color. <laughs> just make it a silly case. I want to make it uh, black. So the app just updated to black. Yep. We allow you to change. Um, Using Hot Reload, you can change a WPF Core App, WPF Framework App, or a WP App. It works for every framework. It works for almost anything. We have documentation. There are some limitations that, that, that are called out in the docs. But for the most part, uh, you should be able to edit almost any XAML as your app run, runs. The only uh, thing you can't do is like, let's say you want to refactor some XAML out to a control that doesn't exist yet. So you'd have to stop Visual Studio to right. add the new control. But once you add it, you can run again and start start moving your XAML. So you can do basically anything that's outside of like changing the, the, tr the structure of your project. UWP apps have these as well? UWP apps have this All as right. well. Yeah, it works for everything. So XAML hot reload combined with the live visual tree that makes finding elements easy, lets you see your running app, um, and combined with another feature, which is this live property explorer. So the live property explorer, the way that it works is that it allows you to experiment. So changing the XAML will change the XAML. Mm -hmm. It also lets you experiment. But those experiments, unless you undo them, will go into your source code right? When you, when you do a commit. The Live Property Explorer lets you make changes that are purely uh, to, to be tested. So if you want to change something from here, uh, let's, let's say font size, you want to make it, what, what if this thing was font size 20? Mm -hmm. right? So you change font size 20, and now you see that, OK, Font size 20, that's probably a bit too much. Uh, how about 9? OK, that's maybe a bit too small. Maybe 12 would have been right. 12 looks good. Uh, the only thing is now you have to go and change that style still in XAML. So this Life Property Explorer, I've gotten some people telling me that it's not clear that, it, that it's only an element for, for testing. It doesn't apply to my, to my code. So we're thinking about that. Maybe next year we can make that experience better. Um, but if you use this panel while your app is running, it's purely for experimentation. It, will, it okay. will not change your real app. So you might possibly add a commit button or something to We're save. thinking something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. But then it's, do you save the most recent thing? Do you save everything up to then? It That's starts to why get it's tricky. hard. It That's why it's get so tricky. hard, yeah. I know. Uh, it, it's amazing how many times we hear, hear from customers and we might even like purely agree with the idea, well, a great idea. And then we start sitting down in the room, a bunch of us, with a right. whiteboard. And then we leave busy. We're like, oh my God, this, this is so much harder than we thought. And then we, we have to cost it. We have to say, well, is this change going to be worth it mm -hmm. for the number of people impacted, for the amount of productivity you improve? So it's always a hard, hard right. decision. But uh, let us know what you think about, about these tools together. Um, another uh, change that we actually have been using while talking right now without explaining it, so let me go back and explain it, is this new feature called Show Just My XAML. This is part of the Live Visual Tree, and this is new in 16.4 Preview 3. I'm going to click. And I'm going to go back to what it used to be. So this used to be the default. This feature didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you had the whole tree. So if I go ahead and expand, uh, wrong button, if I expand the whole tree, this is every single control that composites the app that you have running. It's a lot of controls. Some of them have a little button next to them. Most of them do not. Because those little buttons mean there's actual source code in your app for a text box. But the text box is composed out of a border, a content host, a grid, a rectangle. And you don't have access to that source, but we mm -hmm. see it as part of the tree, so we show it to you. You can still have this view. If this is useful to you, you could view by unclicking this. But we've added this as a new default. 
we talked to a bunch of customers, uh, we talked to our internal teams, and we made a judgment call for better or worse. We think that by default, people want to see this. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to go back to just my XAML. As you see, much smaller tree. Right. This matches your document outline that yes. I showed you before. This is the actual XAML in your app. Now, let's say you're, you're looking at, um, let's say, radio button, right? And, you're, and you think to yourself, okay, this was good. Like, I like the change you, you folks made, but I need to see how this radio button is put together. That's useful to me. If you unclick, we save your position. Now you can see below. You can do whatever you need to do by, by seeing that. And then you can go back to the, this. Does it this show? A quicker view. So when you highlight radio button and click just my XAML again, does mm -hmm. it show you all of the XAML all for the, the XAML. whole thing for or whole just tree. for that radio button? Yeah, we, we've chosen for this first implementation to just make it whole. Okay. Um, the, the, way, the way that we think about it is we make changes that are simple first. This was a simple change. Either right. view everything or view just my XAML. Okay. We just made sure position didn't get lost in the selection and that expand collapse kind of maintained the same similar state. Um, if, if people want to see more improvements here, different kind of functionality, we need to hear. We need okay. to hear from them, make sure we're not overthinking a problem. Because in the past that has happened and uh, our, my whole division, developer division, has really learned over the years not to be overthinkers in, in small changes like this. Make a change, meet the customer feedback, Make sure the team feels good about it. Mm -hmm. Make sure the feedback aligns, and then see what people think. So let us know. Right on. All right. So those are changes. Now, in uh, the in-app toolbar, I just want to point out one more thing. There's a message here that says "Hard Reload Available." This was added um, for th for the sake of like customers were telling us they don't know if Hard Reload is working or not sometimes, because there there were certain things, and we're expanding what Hard Reload can do all the time. Like if we're finding something doesn't work, we make it work. But before. There, there's been multiple cases where something doesn't work because, not because the feature doesn't work, like hard reload would have worked, but hard reload wasn't available because let's say you ran your app in release mode and we only attach this tool if it's debug mode. So we decided to add a message to make it very clear. If we see okay. hard reloads working because we can see your tree and we can go down that infrastructure path, we'll, make it, we'll show it available. If it's not, it'll say unavailable. And if you click unavailable, and by click I mean this, this link, if it says hard reload unavailable, you click on it, it's going to go to documentation. I'll show you what the doc looks like. In this case, I'm going to available because that's the state we're in. But we've built documentation. We have a troubleshooting guide mm. for why it might be unavailable. And we have a documentation which, if it is available and you click on it, tells you about what this feature, how it works, what are some of the limitations, uh, what are some of the error messages, what they mean, and also give you links to similar technology in Xamarin Forms, et cetera, right? So we're trying to build, build out docs. Uh, it's one of the things I'm working on as a PM, making sure we have docs. So if something is missing from docs, yep. please let us know. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that's a change before. Now, if you if you are annoyed by this message, we've had some people, you know, in testing, we were internally testing it, say, I don't care, I know how reload is available, go away. We made a little collapse, so you can just collapse it. The state will remember across restarts of your app. We'll never show right. this again unless you click the expander again. Okay. Um, we also in 16.4 made these slightly brighter. This this comes from Visual Studio Theme, and uh, we literally had somebody tell me, "I don't see the mover. Like, where's the mover?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Ooh, yeah, it's hard to see it uh, at times." So, and because we get these colors from Visual Studio, we weren't controlling them. So we met with the Visual Studio team. We, we, we asked them to make them brighter. They agreed, they made it brighter for everywhere there's a mover in Visual Studio, in fact. And in fact, they might even make it brighter again. They're doing another review using some contrast tests that they do. So mm -hmm. uh, note that these colors are constantly improving. You see something small like this that's bothering you, please let us know. Like I'm always telling people, VS feedback really works. We really look at every single thing that you send us. Like literally, some, mm -hmm. some lead, lead dev or PM will take a look at it. So please keep the feedback coming. All right, um, hard reload, let, let me talk about hard reload a little bit more. So hard reload has had some limitations in the recent past. I already forget, like some of this was fixed in 16.0, some in 16.2, I think, or 16.3. When did it first show up? Oh, hard reload's been around for, for a while. I don't even know, way before I joined the team. It was just not something we advertised enough. Yeah, okay. So we're advertising more. So we had it way before Xamarin Forms. Um, but now that us and Xamarin Forms have the capability, we're trying to have the same name cross-linking to each other and mm -hmm. just advocating for the feature because people using the feature really like it and we really like it. We use it to build the, the feature. I love that part. Um, such a geek. So uh, from that perspective, we, we had some features that, that were at the detail level not working. So for example, WPF changing a resource dictionary used to not work. That was a big, big oversight on our part. And um, it wasn't super cheap to do it. It wasn't too expensive, but like it was a medium cost item. 
the team never got around to it. We never heard feedback. And then we started to hear feedback. And, and I joined the team, and I advocated for it, so we made that change. So now you can change a resource dictionary for WPF uh, since like 16.2 or 3, okay. one of those releases. Um, definitely being on the latest version of VS has the benefit of having all these features. Another thing that we added uh, back in 16.0 that, that I know for sure is XBind. So if you have XBind in a UWP app and you used to change XBind when your, your app ran, it would say not supported below. If you make a change in XAML that we know isn't supported, we just put us quickly across and we say not supported. Um, now you can make that change in like, I would say about 60% of the cases. There's still some things like functions and other, you know, edge cases that don't work. We're exploring constantly. We hear feedback, but like we're thinking how to make that even better. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing we're working on. So hard reload behind the scenes is getting better. But we're also tweaking some of the tools around how to reload, just like just my XAML that I showed you a second ago, but also small changes that have, um, uh, like I had somebody get upset at us for, for making this change. This change has been out since uh, I think 16.3. And a certain customer said, you guys suck. Like really, I, I used to love that this used to work a certain way and you changed it. We said, really sorry, like it, it's on us. We should have added a setting from the beginning to give you back the previous functionality. We knew this would upset somebody. And uh, so in 16.4 preview 3, we added a setting to change this back how it used to work. But let me show you how it works now. Clicking the selector, mm -hmm. um, if you think about like how this works in other products, uh, other tools, um, F12 tools is a big example. You click the select my element and you click on an element and the selection stops. So you can continue interacting with your application. Before, the way it used to work is that in our app, when you click this and you click something here, the selector would keep working. So a lot of people then did what, what, what they know from F12 tools. They would click on a button and it would select the button, move, it, move them away in the live visual tree, away from what they wanted to select. Like it, would, it confused people, right? Why doesn't this work like other selectors? Select, select, and then back to normal. Um, so we made that change. But if you want the old behavior, so this is the new default. Go to settings, there's a setting to, to change it. Okay. So, yeah, I'll show you what that setting is. If you go to options, and you go to, you go to XAML, so under, uh, sorry, I'm always, always forgetting where my old settings are. There you go. So, if you go under here, and let's go highlight this again. So, now the, there's a bunch of settings. So, turn, uh, turn off selection mode when an element is selected. Okay. So, this is under, uh, debugging, general, and in general, look for the enable UI debugging tree, and then you can change this behavior. As you can see, just my XAML is in here as well. We, we learned from that <laughs> mistake. We said not everyone would like just my XAML to be a default, so you can make it a default or you can make it not a default. You can change that here for these settings. Okay. If we're missing some setting customers want, please let us know if some feature could use a, a flip. But uh, settings are often cheap enough to add that we don't mind, we don't mind doing it, uh, e even if like one customer complains. Uh, so that's that's another change that we've made. All right, uh, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. We've talked about all the sort of uh, high reload changes and talk about the code editor a little bit more. I mean, we started with the code editor. We talked about the pop-up feature. We talked about IntelliCode. But I'll talk about one more feature, which is literally I got three tickets for this when I joined the team. Three different people said, please add region support to XAML. And I was puzzled by that at first. I'm like, didn't we do that already? I, I just joined the team at that time, and I wasn't even, even like, I didn't have everything memorized, right? So I Googled it, and I found a, a blog post where we talk about this in Visual Studio 2015. And I'm like, oh man, this is on us. We must be doing something wrong. People aren't discovering that the feature already exists. So I started checking out IntelliSense, and I realized that when you would type this, so like if you type, the f you know, you activate IntelliSense with mm -hmm. the open bracket here, um, regions wasn't coming up. It wasn't in this list. So there was a bug in IntelliSense. So we fixed the bug. Here it is. Regions is here in 16.4 preview 3. So if you want to do a region, you can say region, start, and then you can do this. And you can say, hey, look, it's smart enough to know that you probably want to end your region. And now you can put some XAML in between. And that XAML can be collapsed, expanded, cool. just, like, just like you would expect. This actually works on VS for Mac as well, mm -hmm. because my team now helps uh, Xamarin Forms maintain the XAML editor across both VS for Mac and Windows. This works for every XAML application type. In fact, we tr we're trying to do that between us and the Xamarin Forms team for every XAML feature that you come across. If you see us do something for desktop that you would love to see in Xamarin Forms and it's not there yet, send us feedback that 
emphasizes it for us even more. Um, same thing back, you know, the other way. Like we want to make sure that if you're a XAML developer, the tools feel kind of the same for you no matter where mm -hmm. you go. You have the same features. But that's that's a feature that's there. Cool. Now another thing that we realized is that um, like th this, this was like one of those like you get something, feedback, you respond, you find a bug, you fix it, but then you start thinking. And one of the, the ways we started thinking about was shouldn't we add a snippet for regions? And then you know our team said, well, we don't actually even show snippets inside of XAML IntelliSense. And so how expensive would it be to fix that? Like we should, right? Z C Sharp has it, which XAML supports it, but we don't have it in IntelliSense. That's just weird. So we fixed that. Uh, if you start typing and you type Reg, uh, a row, for example, right? Like um, row is now a snippet we include out of the box. So we mm -hmm. built like five snippets. So if you have a grid, let's do a grid, right? A new grid here. And my bad. And then you have grid column definitions. And then you want to type column, you can do call. And then you can do tab, tab, and you mm -hmm. have a column. Cool. So Snippets are supported. Uh, snippets are now in IntelliSense. There's a snippet for column, row, tag, setter, region. Uh, so here's like if we wanted to then put this grid inside of a, a region. So let's start typing region and region. And there, there's another feature called surround width that we could have done it with. Uh, this is good enough. So there you go. It makes it just easier, right? Now we can collapse. Clubs is grid and hide it away. Nice. So things like that are, are cool that, that we can do it. And uh, we got already feedback from internal teams who saw us add this feature. They're like, well, in C Sharp, you can filter your IntelliSense to like snippets or methods or properties. Like there's a bunch of filters. So we, we know that we don't have that today. We show you everything in the list and we're thinking about how to improve that in the future. So everything is trying to improve. Uh, and that, that's at least cool. a really good thing. So we talked about uh, regions and snippets and everything for that. Um, also, by the way, custom snippets, if you add your own, will show up in IntelliSense because it, it's generic, right? We just included five just to give people an example, really. And uh, the only thing we can't do with snippets is we can't make them platform specific. It's just not part of how snippets work. So we can't make XAML snippets that are only for, let's say, WPF core or UWP. So we have to be really careful which ones we build in because we don't want to put a snippet that doesn't work in right. one, one platform or another. But we're always looking for feedback. All right, let's talk about one more feature that uh, will, will take us out of this flow of saying, if you have 16.4, preview 3, mm -hmm. you have everything. This feature is not in there. Okay. This feature is more prototypey than finished, but it's, um, it's good enough of a direction. Like I feel like our team is moving in a direction to ship a feature like this in the future that I'm, go I'm going to show it to you. Because so this I is want not feedback. in 16.4? It's not in 16. It's oh. not in any VS update. You have to install okay. an extension. The extension okay. is published by one of the developers that I work with. It's, okay. not, it's not even Microsoft. It's like a personally published extension. But I can assure the audience that this is from my team, and the developer publishing the extension is the person working on the, fe the real feature. Okay. So, but it's very rough, but I want to show it to you because it's so awesome. Um, this is a feature I would have liked back when I was a WPF developer uh, in back in Microsoft Consulting, when I used to build WPF apps for customers. So I have a long XAML background. Um, so now I'm able to help bring the features. That's kind of cool to go from being a customer to being a person to influence this. This feature is uh, called the XAML uh, binding errors window. We have never had a dedicated window to binding failures. Mm -hmm. And uh, any XAML developer will tell you, I, I definitely would tell you if I was me from you know, seven years ago, I'd be like, oh my god, the output window sucks for triaging binding failures. Like, like I want to see them clearly. I want to see that something failed. And I want it in, in some list. And in fact, I'd love to click on the failure and go to the code right. where it's failing, right? So you want to do all of that. How do you do it? Um, I'm going to break a binding. And uh, the, there it is. It's now showing up on this list. Cool. So this is an extension that we published in a marketplace. It's called the XAML binding debug, um, debug output. It, this works with various versions of Visual Studio. Today, it only supports uh, WPF framework and core. We're going to add EWP. We're going to add Xamarin Forms. We're working with all those teams okay. when you are in the future. So um, this is a real window we plan to build. This window today is not close to feature complete. It's not even styled correctly. Um, it might crash your Visual Studio. So if worst case, uninstall the <laughs> extension, like treat it as a very early preview. Okay. But we are publishing it out there because I want people to install it and stare at it and give us feedback. There's, in fact, a feedback button we put inside of it. Since this is a kind of an out-of-band preview feature, mm -hmm. we take you to GitHub 
Uh, so we, we have put up a GitHub issue list so folks can come in here and start filing issues against it, suggestions, bugs. Right. Um, again, really early, but we're going to take feedback this way. My team usually doesn't work on GitHub like this, but for this feature, we felt the VS feedback functionality wouldn't be right because this isn't built into VS. And there are, the team that routes stuff would be confused where to route the feature for a thing that doesn't exist. And, okay. and this makes it easy. So please let us know. We're super excited. There's one more feature I'm going to show that is not even available to anybody yet. We tried to ship it for 16.4, but we just we weren't happy. You know, we, 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 like, we were trying to the last moment, and then we said we're not happy enough. But we know we're going to ship it at some point, probably 16.5, right? Okay. So I think it's going to come in the next release in the previous stage. So I'll show the feature because I want to hear from folks to, uh, you know, what they think. Uh, but let me show you what the feature is. I'm going to switch to another version of Visual Studio that is even hotter, <laughs> that's not publicly out yet, and just talk about one feature, which is suggested actions. In the past, in the designer, so let me zoom in on the designer a little bit because in this resolution, uh, this is a bit rough. Let me zoom in to like 60%, even more. Uh, all right. So um, in the designer, the way, the, the flow of like, okay, your app is not running. You have the designer in front of you. You have a button. You click on the button, and you want to change the contents property, right? So how do you change the content property? Well, you have to go to your property explorer, and you have to find the content property. And there's, you know, like we know which properties people choose, like we, we've done an analysis on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we have some data which shows us like some examples of what people choose, um, especially since we have a lot of internal people who send us telemetry. Like if you work at Microsoft and you use Visual Studio, you send me a lot more telemetry than you do if you're an external customer. So we learn a lot from that. So we know the common things you want to do, content being one of the most common. And right now in my properties pane, I don't even see content. I can go in here and I can type content and Hopefully it comes up, okay, there it is, okay, mm -hmm. button, uh, Dimitri is what I really wanted it to say, so okay, now I changed it. But that's a really bad flow, we think. We want to make it easier, so we want to suggest common properties to you and make it super easy to do that. Light bulb, uh, suggested action light bulbs. You mm -hmm. click on this, and we show you content as one of the top properties, background. Like, these are all properties. Think of it similar, like in Telecode, we did analysis to choose these sets of properties. That's cool. And this, uh, this is something, like, we're totally still exploring. Um, do we leave these properties? Do we make this pop up automatically instead of popping up when I click? Um, by the way, the fact that it pop up, pops up on the left covering the control is a bug in this preview. So if this will be fixed, it'll pop okay. up on the right side. Uh, so it'll never cover the control as long as we have enough space in the screen. But basically, um, that's a feature we really want to make work super well. So mm -hmm. let us know what you think. How, how can this be better? Some other things we're going to do, that because again, this is super early, we're going to add um, s like actions as well, not just properties. So for example, you click on a tab control, add a new tab. Today, that's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. There'll be an action tab inside of uh, suggested actions. So think of this UI maybe getting two tabs or maybe getting some extra pain on the right or something. And again, early, we have to work with the yep. UX team to figure all this out. But there'll be some way to execute common actions, change common properties. We're also brainstorming, do we add a toolbar to the top of the XAML designer, maybe for like element alignment, bold, italic, maybe move some of these com very common, like these common changes, bold, italic, font, mm -hmm. like style, these style changes are, are pretty much common to every single control that has the ability to be bolded, you know, or, right. or italicized. So maybe we add something more generic even. We're really invested to make the designer flow better for, for folks because we know th that kind of ruins the designer for a lot of people. They, they click on a control, they have to go to properties, they have to search. Like, man, it's easier just to go change XAML at that point, especially right. if the properties are very far apart. By making this thing here uh, just be click, 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 it, the flow speeds up a lot. We're testing it internally. And our, and our time to, to, to change a screen can go from like minute, from like five minutes to like one minute. Like that's super, super productive, especially for the folks that don't know XAML super well. Cool. So I'm really excited to ship yeah. this as well. And, uh, I like that. And there you go. The list is done. Yay. Excellent. We, we went through all the list. All right. Cool stuff. Yeah, so again, you. everything except the extension and this sneak preview. Yeah. Uh, is in 16.4, and much of it is in preview 3, yes. right? 16.4 hasn't shipped yet. Yeah. 16.4, preview 3. Yes. And often the stuff was in there before. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for coming back on the show. I'm excited to be back again. Uh, hopefully back maybe every three months or something to talk about new Absolutely. features. We have so much to be working on. All right. It's great. Hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank you, folks.